Welcome back to square one. I'm your host, James. Today, we're gonna to be building a set of cornhole boards. The hardest part about this build is that they're gonna be painted like the American flag and getting the proportions right is gonna be pretty essential so that way it looks right. Um, the first step that we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of our materials and get them broken down. I will put a material list in the description below. Yeah, but really all she needs a half sheet of plywood and five two by fours. All right, let's get started. All right guys, as you can see, I've already got the sheet of plywood broken down. I ripped it at 24 inches last night whenever I got home with the material because it was supposed to be rainy today. However, like Arkansas, it was not. So, um, I already have to cut the plywood with a circular saw. This is my top side. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and flip this over. And what we need to do is take our circular saw, flip it over, and then measure from the edge of the saw blade to the outside, which is going to, for my saw is five inches. So we're going to have a five inch offset to this side of the blade. Five is going to be 53, so we're going to mark 53. Mark 53. So what that mark is for is so we can use a straight edge guide like this one. piece over because the way a circular saw blade spins as it's coming it's pushing up so whenever it's cutting and you're going to have little chips in your plywood yeah you can put tape on it but that's not always going to help it's best just to flip it over and that way you get this nice clean cut on your top side even though we're going to wrap it over later it's still best just to go ahead and do it our next step is going to be breaking down our two by fours and we're actually going to make them a 16th under size in each direction so that way we can make sure that our boards give a nice clean fit okay so when it comes to breaking down the two by four material you're going to need four 47 and 15 sixteenths four 20 and 15 sixteenths and four cut at 12 inches for the legs I'm going to go ahead and speed through this so that way I can get right back to you.
now that we've got all of our pieces broken down to uh, final lengths, what we're going to do is we're going to rip everything down to three quarters of an inch and that way we can get rid of one of these radius edges so that way we have a flat surface to mount our board to. On the legs, however, we're going to rip them down to three inches, ripping the radius edge off of both sides. We'll come back later and put a different radius on it. I uh, just feel like it makes it a better look and it gives a better profile whenever uh, all four edges have been refinished. All right, we're gonna time lapse this and get through all the cuts and then I'll get back with you with the next step. All right, let's get to it. inch and a half by inch and a half. What I end up using this for is a cross brace between the legs and then also you're going to be needing uh, four carriage bolts. I use 3H carriage bolts with regular washers and fender washers. Fender washers I take and I put them in between the leg and the actual frame of the board itself so that way you get a good smooth operation for the life of the board. We're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and build our frame and that way while that glue is drying we can go ahead and uh, cut out the circles in our boards then we'll start working on the leg assembly Uh, to be doing this, I'm going to first rough cut the hole out with a jigsaw. Then we're going to go back in with a template and a router to make a nice clean cut. And we'll do that to both boards. This router is made by Skill and it's digital. And uh, y'all can kind of see these buttons. All right, what was happening is every time that it got plugged in, this negative button was stuck, so I kept dropping the RPMs. And what I ended up doing in between, um, after I got done cutting, is I pulled this top off, and these two buttons were attached together. So I took them up. I broke them apart from each other and then I ended up having to swap the springs around inside because apparently the one that was on the negative was not strong enough on the negative because the negative has more friction from the casing. But uh, overall, I, I don't know, I'm not too impressed with this router. This is actually the second one that I've had. So uh, I might end up just taking it back and getting the DeWalt or the Bosch, depending on what was in stock. The only reason why I bought this one the first time was it was the only one that was in stock that uh, my uh, guide bushings that I have will fit in without having to do any modifications. So, uh, but anyways, a little montage of gluing the million, million boards on, and then we'll be ready for routing 
and our leg assemblies. square up your frame and I, I attached the board to the frame using a inch and a half 15 gauge nail with my nail gun um, basically just nail down to one side and then square up your corner make sure it's even across if you have any sort of reveal with your plywood make it even all the way across start to shoot the other corner get it in place nail down that side and then finish nailing it all the way off. Um, now that these boards are done, we're going to set them to the side. We're going to uh, get our leg assembly started. Uh, basically, we're going to do our rounded over ends. We're going to um, get our holes drilled in both the boards and the legs. So that way, if they're mated together, we'll number those off. Um, and then we'll get back to the boards when we get into the sanding and the routing of the legs. So we'll do all the sanding and routing at one time. And then we'll move into paint. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come in and we're gonna mark an inch and a half. And then an inch and a half. To find our center. set to an inch and a half. This gives us our radius edge. Now that we're angled down here on the bottom, all that we're going to do is mark one inch. square and go from the corner to one inch. This will typically be around 18, 19 degrees. It generally works out. Most of the time our sports are getting set up throughout the grass. So there's going to be a little bit of play with what's level. And we'll just go ahead and get these other two done and then I will show you all the cuts at the bandsaw and at the miter saw. on each side of the board. Three and an eighths from the top of your board and one and five eighths from the bottom. So, and then you'll mark your hole and you're gonna drill a five or a three eighths hole or slightly bigger, you can wall it out just a little bit if you need to. And that way your bolt slides through freely. All right, let's go ahead and get these holes drilled.
guys. So we're at our second to last step of assembly. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to bolt our legs on, then we're going to take our measurement for our cross brace, and then we will drill a pilot hole in the center of the cross brace. And that way we can use that as basically a locator to get our screw set and then we'll get everything glued together. We'll pull the legs back off while the legs are drying. We are going to flip the boards over and go around and make sure that we put putty any gaps in our plywood um, and make sure we putty all of our nail holes and our screw holes. As these are going to be painted, um, it just gives it a much cleaner look. And the putty that we're going to be using is all let me get it. I'm going to be using this Bama Wood Wood Filler. Um, it has basically like an acetone chemical compound in it. Uh, it dries real fast, real hard. So by the time that we are done getting our legs glued up and the glue set on the legs, the putty should be set up for our final sanding. And then we can move right into our paint. All right, let's get to it. sides as well. Um, the last thing we're going to do before we call this work done and spray our actual finish on it is we're going to go around all the sides and paint them black. The legs are going to be black as well. Um, I think it's just going to be a much more finished look. white on this before I move on to painting the union and the stripes. I know I've got a good solid base cut down. Um, other than that, 
Okay guys, we're back. Our base coat is dried. We have sanded and reapplied a second coat of white. Um, now we're going to uh, lay out our stripes. What we're going to do is we're going to find center on both sides. So center of 24 is 12 and we'll just make a mark at 12. And then come around to the other side. And mark it as at 12 there as well. What that mark is for is I have made a jig right here. Um, it is 1 and 13 sixteenths of an inch. That I've measured marked the center. We're going to take that and we're going to line it up with our center mark. Then we're going to lay out our stripes by marking each side of the block and then putting our block on the line and we're working from the center out here and that way if there is any sort of differentiation on the stripes overall it's only going to be on these last two stripes on the end everything else through the center will be even um, it's the way that it's going to look is that we're going to line up exactly on the very edge of the board, which will include our round over. And it also gives us exactly 13 stripes. drywall square. We will get this placed. Double check to make sure that we are lined up. Put our lines on each end. And then we're going to mark that line. Okay guys, to lay out our union, all that we have to do is come down to our seventh stripe, which is our center stripe. The, ed the bottom edge of that stripe is the bottom edge of our union. So we're going to measure 18 and a quarter. Work there. And then you can either do the top edge or the very bottom edge of the first stripe to lay that out. Then you need to take a straight edge of some sort and I'm going to go ahead and use my drywall square. Line up my marks. And then draw one line. trying to make it dark enough for y'all to see it. But then from here up is our union. And then we are going to mask out our stripes. Okay guys, now that we've got all of our stripes drawn out, what we're going to do is we're going to come back with a razor blade and with this tape you can see just through 
and then we're going to cut just along the line to give us a nice crisp edge. Okay guys, now that we've got our tape all laid out, smoothed out and flat, what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we are going to paint it white. I know that we are painting the red stripes, but yep, we're going to paint them white. The reason why is that by doing this, it'll help seal the edges of the tape. And that way we do not get any bleed through whenever we do lay down our red. such a long video the painting process for this flag takes quite a little while um, well we're at final assembly and what we're gonna do is we are going to take our carriage bolts and install our legs after that we're ready for a game first thing that I like to do is take the carriage bolt run it in and out of the hole a few times just to make sure that there's no paint no finish block in the hole and then we also do the same thing to the legs Then we take some paste wax. We're going to apply a little bit onto the top of the legs and the board just around the bolt hole for the leg. And that'll give our fender washers a little bit of lubrication to slide on and make them really smooth. during use. Now if you hung with me on this video for its entirety, I truly appreciate it. I did not mean for this video to be so long. What we do is we're going to 
set the washer and the bolt. Now what you're doing is slide the bolt in just far enough to hang the washer on. Oh, this is the tricky part, trying to get everything to line up, because it's all blind. A little bit of practice, and you can get pretty decent at it. I've done this a few times, but it's been a while since I've done a set of boards. need to take a mallet and just lightly tap it in. Now install your regular washer and take a locking nut these are nylock nuts. Install them two finger tight. And you use nine sixteenths wrench, ratchet, whatever you like to use. to install mine until the nylock is just touching the ed ends of the bolts. I use three and a half inch carriage bolts. So that way you get a nice final fit and not really having to try to get in there to do any cutting with a grinder or anything. Work it a few times, get everything all nice and lubed up. You should not see your nuts turning. If you do, turn it a few times and then tighten it back up. This one on this side's turning on me. So we're going to add a few more turns to it, get it locked into place. Also, if you notice, I am working on a moving blanket to help protect the finish. All right, that looks good. There you have it. One set of American flag cornhole boards. Thanks for watching.